Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I'm going to show you how to create floppy disks for your Apple II computer. So looking at the back of the Apple II computer, we can see that there are very few ports on the machine, and the ones that are there cannot connect to a modern computer. The same goes for the Apple II floppy drives. They use a very special proprietary Apple connector that cannot be plugged into a modern computer. Even if it could, the modern computer wouldn't be able to read the special format of the Apple II diskettes. So we are going to have to connect the Apple to our modern machine using a serial cable. Now you may be wondering how we're going to do this because you can see that there is not a serial connector on the back of the Apple. So we're going to have to use this card called the Super Serial Card, which you can see right here. And we need to configure that before we can use it, so let's get right into it. So first, we need to configure these dip switches into the right positions. These are on the upper left-hand corner of the card, and these positions need to be right in order for the serial communication to work. So on the first dip block, the first four switches need to be down, five, six, and seven need to be up, and then on the second block, one and two need to be up, 3 needs to be down, 4 needs to be up, and 5, 6, and 7 need to be down. Now we are almost done configuring the card. So the final thing we need to do to the card is put this jumper into the correct position. The arrow on the jumper should be pointing up towards the word modem and not down towards the word terminal. You just pull it out like a dip chip and position it the right way. I am not going to do this here though because I always end up stabbing my finger with the pins and it really hurts so I'm just going to leave it there. And now the final thing we need to do to this card is plug in the little connector port into the, its connector on the side of the card. It took me a few tries here because I'm holding a camera and it's very hard to do that while you're filming. Well now that we've got that connector installed on there it's time to insert it into the Apple II. Now it's very important that you put this into slot 2 of your Apple, just press it in, and then feed the connector out through one of the empty slots in the back. It doesn't really matter which one, just feed it out one of them. And now we can close up the top of our Apple II and prepare our serial cable. We are going to be using a special serial cable for this project that I ordered from RetroFloppy.com. Now this cable has a 25 pin connector on one end and a standard 9 pin serial connector on the other. It's very important to order the null modem cable instead of the straight through cable because it will not work with the straight through cable. Now that we have this connector, we can plug it in. Plug the 25 pin end into the port in the Apple II that we just installed and plug the 9 pin end into your modern computer's serial port. If you do not have a serial port on your modern computer, you can pick up one of these cheap little USB to serial converters off of eBay and connect this into your computer and into your serial cable, just like I'm doing here. Now that we have all the hardware configured, we can move on to the software. We are going to use a program called ADT Pro that will run both on our Apple and on our computer to transfer files between them. So we are going to go to this website, which will be in the description, and download ADT Pro 2.0.2.zip. We are going to open that file and then click Extract All Files. Then on this menu, we're going to click Extract. And now this process, it takes about 30 seconds on this particular computer, so I sped it up a little bit so you don't have to wait. Now that's done, we can go into this ADT Pro folder and then into the Disks folder. Now this folder is where you're going to place all of the disk images of games and software that you want to copy over to your Apple II. Make sure they are in this folder or else ADT Pro will not recognize them. Also make sure that they are in a DSK, PO, or DO format. Now that we're done with that, we can go back and try to start up the software by double clicking the ADT Pro batch file. Do not click the command script. Make sure you're clicking the batch file. But before we actually start it up, we're going to have to download a serial library called RXTX because oftentimes this program will not see the serial ports unless you download this library. This link will be down in the description and just download the same one that I downloaded here. Once that's downloaded, we can open the zip file and then we can go into the RXTX folder 
then into the Windows folder, and now we select this folder here. Now, as you can see, we have the two DLL files that will make ADT Pro work. Now we can go back over to the ADT Pro folder and then go into the lib folder. Then after that we need to select the RXTX folder and once we are in there we want to click the top folder out of this list. Now we can go back over to our RXTX window and we can copy those two DLL files and then we can paste them in the ADT Pro folder that we have open in the other window. Now there are already two of these libraries in that folder but they don't work so when it asks you if you would like to replace them click copy and replace for both of them. Now that that is done we can go back to the main ADT Pro folder and we can attempt to start up the software. So we double click the batch file and we click run and then that command prompt window will flash on your screen and then a few seconds later you should get this ADT Pro server window. Alright well now that we have the software configured let's power on the Apple II. So I'm just going to turn on the power switch on the back and we should get this Apple II message on the display. Now I'm sorry that I'm just pointing the camera at a TV screen, but when I tried capturing video directly from the Apple, it strobed and it just looked weird and I couldn't use it, so I had to resort to this. But we don't want this Apple II message on the screen because it means that the Apple is trying to boot from drive one. And we don't want it to boot from the drive because we have no disk in the drive. So we are going to hit control and reset on the keyboard at the same time to make this go away. When we do this, we should have this blinking prompt on the screen. Now we can go over into the ADT Pro software and hit File, and then go to Serial Configuration. Here we need to select the proper COM port for our serial cable. For me, it is COM4, but for you it could be any port. And if you're not sure which one it is, just try them all until you find one that works. Now click OK, and click Serial. And now it will connect to the Apple via Serial. Now we go to Bootstrapping, ProDOS, and Speedy Boot, which will send some bootstrap code over the serial cable to the Apple II. Now this window comes up asking us to enter some commands on the Apple, so let's do that. So first we type in IN number 2 and hit Enter. This tells the computer to look for a super serial card on slot 2. Now we hit Control A, which brings up this Apple SSC prompt. And then at that prompt, we type 14B and hit Enter. Now that we have that done, our screen should look like this. And over on the computer, we can press OK on that dialog. When we do that, we should see a bunch of numbers and letters start scrolling down our Apple II screen as bootstrap code is sent over to it. A few seconds later, this ADT Pro serial bootstrapper window will come up and it will continue loading code over the serial port. This takes a few minutes, so I'm going to pause and come back when it's done. Alright, now that it's done, we are at the ADT Pro splash screen on the Apple II. Now, we have a few options here, but before we select any of them, we're going to need to insert a blank floppy disk into drive 1. Once we have the disk inserted into drive 1, we need to press F on the keyboard for format. Now that brings us to this screen, which shows us our two disk drives and the title of each disk in each drive. Now drive 2 says I.O. error because there's no disk inserted into the drive, and drive 1 for you will probably also say I.O. error because your disk has never been formatted before. My disk says ADT Pro because I've already installed the ADT Pro client on this disk before, but I'm going to go ahead and format it anyways so that you can see how to do this. So to format the disk in Drive 1, we can just go down to our keyboard and hit Return. Once we do that, it will ask us what we want to name the disk. We are going to leave it as blank, so just hit Return again. Now we are going to hit Y to say that we are ready to format the disk. This takes a minute. Once it's done, it will ask us if we want to format another disk. We do not, so we are going to hit N, which will bring us back to the main ADT Pro menu. 
Back at the main menu, we are going to press R for receive so that we can send the ADT Pro client disk image over the serial port to create an ADT Pro boot disk for the Apple. Once we press R, it will ask us if we know the exact file name of the file that we want, and we do not, so we are just going to press enter for a list of them all. Now here is a list of all of the files that I have in the disks folder on my computer. Now I probably have a lot more than you because I've installed a lot of games on this Apple II in the past. But the file that we are going to need here is the file that says ADT Pro 2.0.2.dsk. So just use the arrow keys to scroll down to it and then when you get to it hit return to select it. Now once the file is selected this menu will come up asking us which disk we want to burn it to. We want to burn it to the disk in drive 1, so just hit return. Now we see this ADT Pro screen as it transfers the information over the serial port to the disk. Now this will take a minute, so I will come back when it is done. Now that the process is done, I'm going to go to the back of my Apple and power cycle it. Now that it is back on, we can see that it's booting from the disk we just made. Now that ADT Pro has booted from the disk, we need to select the connection type between our computer and our Apple. For us, it is serial, so we will press S. Now we will be back at the familiar ADT Pro splash screen, but before we do anything here, we need to insert a floppy disk into Drive 2. We can't use Drive 1 anymore because it has our ADT Pro floppy in it now, so we are going to put a disk into Drive 2 for formatting. Now back at the ADT Pro menu, we are going to press F for format, and this time we are going to format the disk in Drive 2. Now that it's done formatting, we are going to go back into the Receive menu, and I'm going to select a game that everyone should be familiar with, the Oregon Trail. So I'm going to scroll down to it, hit Return, and I'm going to write it to the floppy in Drive 2. Now we wait for it to transfer, and when it's done, we are going to have to switch our disks around in the floppy drive because the Apple will not boot from a disk in Drive 2. So we need to put the Oregon Trail disk into Drive 1. And now when we boot up our Apple, we have the Oregon Trail. And that is pretty much all there is to it when it comes to making disks for your vintage Apple II computer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.